Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode two of my monthly Clockwork Empires playthrough episodic thingy. Uh, my name is Alfred. The game, as you can see, is Clockwork Empires. It's uh, a colony building and slash survival game uh, in early access, available on Steam, as published by the good folks at Gaslamp Games. Now, this is episode two of the series, and I do this about once a month when there's a new release to the stable branch. And in the previous episode, I went over essentially the changelog, stuff that had changed uh, from uh, between revision 43 and the current revision 44. And so from this point forward, for the next couple of episodes, I'm just going to play through a session. And you can get a sense of how the game plays and how it's different and the pacing of the game and all that good stuff. So here we go. I'm going to start a new game. Uh, once again, I should mention this map in the back. It's a procedurally generated height map with, uh, you know, essentially an arch, uh, archipelago in the ocean. And so you land, uh, the premise of the game is that you land somewhere on this ocean and you set up your colony and you start building. Now, it's, uh, there's only kind of proof of concept stage at the moment. If we go back here, you'll see there's a create new world button. And what that does is it procedurally generates a new map, but the map doesn't actually affect the game yet. These two locations here, yeah, the new Antipodia and new Sogwood locations, they're always in those same locations, regardless of the map. And that's because uh, terrain generation has not yet been integrated into the game. So these are the only two playable locations. When it is fully integrated, I, I think the devs intend for um, the characteristics of your starting biome to be determined by your location on the map. Um, that's not, that's to come. It's, it's yeah, uh, still in the works. We pick a loadout here. This is the default easy loadout, slightly more advanced materials, uh, tons of food loadout, or the Dauntless Dare, the no supplies at all loadout. I am, uh, huh. Yeah, in the interest of, I like to play with the Dauntless Dare, but in the interest of making this video series interesting to watch, uh, I think I'm just going to go with the advanced colony starter pack here. I am, however, going to go with the jungle. That's, uh, I think, a more interesting biome. It's a little bit more challenging as far as biomes go as well. Set course for adventure. Now, I've turned off the tutorial notification. Often, uh, so there's a little checkbox at the in the menu we just left. And the very first time you play, it's enabled. So you have to manually untick it. And uh, the tutorial is a step-by-step -step instruction on how the construction and gathering systems work. I mean... If you've been following the series, you're already, uh, I, I'm sure you're already familiar. So uh, I've disabled tutor the tutorial notification and instead we're gonna get a procedurally generated embarkation message where the Empire congratulates you on um, being awarded, you know, a colony to build uh, and their details like, uh, now bring a dubious workplace safety record to the colonies and glory to the Empire. Um, so, game is currently paused, and uh, yeah, here is our jungle colony. I'm just going to scout around a bit here. So we're in a clearing, which is good. There's some rock nearby. Good, good. It's an animal burrow, which might be beetles and might be... Oh wait, there are no dodos in the uh, jungle biome. Might actually be the jungle fowl. Very first thing I always do is I enable hunting on my soldiers just so they can snap up the random game that spawns nearby, and I can eat it. Now, another thing we can eat are these coconuts, so we'll mark these for foraging. So, first thing to do is to set up a carpentry. I'll set it up over here. Doesn't have to be elaborate. I find often uh, even just even one carpentry bench is probably sufficient until the, like quite late in the game. Uh, but it's easy enough to build two. Uh, just because of the carpentry needs of the colony, I mean you don't you need logs all the time, right? But the rate at which you need them is it's moderate. Like one person 
who works at one carpentry bench can probably supply the entire colony. Uh, but just in case, I mean, so I built two. All right, next thing I'm going to build is a stockpile. Now I used to put, make uh, different stockpiles for food and goods. Oh, here we've been visited by a jungle fowl. I don't bother doing that anymore because of the way uh, goods are stacked nowadays. They don't take up an enormous area and like goods get piled into a single square to form a pile of things. So all your stored goods are much more compact than they used to be. For the sake of clarity, if I need to be able to see how much food I've got at a glance or how much stone or whatever, I might consider uh, filtering the stockpiles there, right? So this is a single stockpile and I can enable or disable storage of particular goods if I feel like it. In the same way, I can make multiple stockpiles. Uh, but I don't really see the need to do that right now. One thing we do need though is more timber and more stone because those will be the basis of all our construction efforts going forward. Just chop down the nearest trees and I'm going to start quarrying these rocks. Mine surface nodes. I am a little concerned that there's not another very obvious... Ooh, gold! Um, <laughs> I was <laughs> awestruck by the presence of gold. Now, I'm a, I was saying I'm a little bit concerned there's no uh, immediately visible source of rock elsewhere. Rhyolite boulders. By the way, I'm going to pick these mushrooms. There we go. Um, and so this will run out sooner or later. I mean, when it runs out, I'll probably have several buildings built. Uh, but I do need to find, I am going to have to put a priority on finding a source of stone. So I've got the carpentry underway. Uh, next thing I will, next thing I definitely want to build is the kitchen. Oh, and here's a new thing. You'll see that some of the buildable workshops are actually grayed out. And that's because I don't possess the prerequisite materials to build them. Right, and the metalworks here needs uh, two units of stone, of which I, I'm only just now coring stone, so I don't have enough. Basically, these don't come up, become available until you have uh, the materials necessary to build them. Um, personally, I see this as a good and bad thing. I mean, one unfortunate uh, ramification of that, of the, of being unable to queue things until you have the materials necessary to build them, is that you can't queue things up in advance. Uh, a benefit of not being able to do that, though, is that uh, for a new player, he won't accidentally queue up a whole bunch of stuff and then, like, be mystified as to why his 10 buildings aren't being built simultaneously. So as resources come in, we can see more of these buildings are becoming, uh, it's increasingly possible to build more buildings. So we've got the progress bar over Elwood Will, and the larger building is, actually the slower the rate of construction which reflects, you know, it takes more work to build a bigger building. So the progress bar doesn't move as fast for big buildings. This is a pretty small building, all things considered. Time to build a kitchen. So as mentioned in the previous episode, kitchens have been combined with the brewery. So I'm, I'm debating either making a small kitchen that only cooks and then building a, another, a second kitchen to be my brewery later on, or I could build one giant kitchen and then fill it with brewery modules. But um, yeah, I think that's what I'll do, actually. I want to make a really big kitchen. and uh, But I'm not going to use it as my brewery until later. Right, so the superstructure for the carpentry has been completed. Mm, but I'm not assigning anyone to be uh, to work in it because uh, it's to, for the carpentry to make uh, planks out of logs. A single worker has to take a unit of log to a carpentry workbench, and none of the carpentry workbenches have been built. So I may as well leave whoever I'm going to assign there uh, to be assigned later, so we can work on construction, for instance, and worry about producing planks later. And time to... you can never get started on your crops too early. So I'm going to start with a... this is actually a fairly large plot. 
And one of the new things in Alpha 44 now is that rather than farming jobs being performed by anyone who's just free and doesn't have anything else to do, you now assign colonists to farm plots. So, um, Everett Boomer. Or Zora Golden Crimble. I'm just looking. Aha! So if we look at Edwina Walker, one of her traits is that she has a rustic disposition and... Wait a second. I thought this was an uh, icon indicating that she would be happy with farming, but it in fact indicates that she's happy owning things that are made of wood. So I don't see anyone who is particularly well suited to farming, so it may just was, was well be Everett Boomer. Or Everett Boomer, this field is now your responsibility. I want you to grow... I'm going to say grow some chilies for now. They're cheap and fast. And they have a high yield, although they require a lot of labor. So we'll have food in the interim. Now for longer term efficiency, I might switch over that plot or I might plant a new plot with maize, which um, it needs less labor, but it produces less, uh, slightly less uh, edibles. But in the long term, it's actually a more efficient use of your labor. And sugar canes are, I, I reserve those for special use later on. Although you can use it to make edible food, it's actually best to grow sugar because sugar is very labor intensive and grows very slowly. Uh, I prefer to save it and use it to produce booze later on. Uh, using the brewery modules, sugar is refined into rum. Well, first it's refined into molasses, which is further refined into rum. So getting back to the kitchen, you can see the new modules in the kitchen uh, so I've, are all the usual stoves and stuff, plus all of the old brewery modules. So the uh, still here, the copper still, and the mechanical brewing tank, and the simple wooden brewing tank. And one thing about combining the kitchen and the brewery together is that you could conceivably be producing beer very early on in the game. Right? Um, well, 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 we'll get to that in a second. Yeah, actually might as well get to it now. Um, so one of the staple crops you can grow is corn, and another one is wheat, and the crops you can grow depend on the biome. Often, those, both those crops can be used for food, but can also be turned into um, chicha and beer, respectively. However, when the brewery was a separate building, uh, actually hold that thought because a whole bunch of stuff... Someone's seen a fish person. I have my choice of reaction. I'm just going to say... I'd like to maintain peaceful relations with them. Whoa, boy, what's going on here? Lacking instruction from me because I took so long to think about it, my NCO Bruce Wood decided to intimidate this fish person. The fish person reacted poorly, uh, aggressively, in fact, and now he's shooting him to death. And um, I actually should have responded to that sooner. Okay, so what is my what is going to be my policy toward fish people going forward? I would like actually f to maintain peaceful relations with them because the jungle is uh, a much more difficult, bi uh, slightly more difficult biome to survive in, and I don't need the additional threat of fish people. So uh, what happened there was that first let's clear all the blood out of town. One of the new things in Alpha 44 is that. Fish people, there's a small chance fish people will react poorly to intimidation. Broadly speaking, if you're trying to maintain peaceful relations with the fish people, you instruct your soldiers uh, to take a, uh, only be a, only hassle them when they're actively breaking the rules of a colony. So like stomping on your corn plants or kicking your supplies and things. In uh, in revision 43 and previous. Fish people would just react to uh, they would react to the intimidation and they would, they would just leave. In Alpha 44, that's been tweaked a little bit so that they will run away much more readily um, when faced with intimidation. But there's a, an additional small chance that they will react aggressively, which is what just happened there. So on a large that was just one fish person, but fish people can wander through your town in gangs or schools of fish uh, fish people. Which is a little bit unfortunate, actually, because it looks like this first person was bringing us a gift of raw beetle steak. And I also have a choice as to what I'm going to do with his body. 
I'm just going to dump it outside of town for now, but I also have the option of burying it nicely or even chopping it up into bloody chunks. For food, I mean, you could choose to eat that. Uh, one thing I didn't get to, actually a couple of things I didn't get to in my Alpha 44 Changelog Digest episode, was that you can, uh, you can change the names of the colonists now to whatever suits you. I mean, it's, it's, it's a small change, but it's, it looks, it sounds like one that was widely requested. For instance, uh, Bruce Wood. Here's our NCO Bruce Wood. Click this little box here. I can change his name to, uh, I need a name. Um, Brad Pitt. Right, and now now our guard is named Brad Pitt, and his unit is Brad Pitt's 144th Guards. Oh, so that's a fun little thing you can do. And if you're playing with other people, or if you're running a community, uh, if you're running a a community colony, as we sometimes do on the official forums in a succession style game where. Uh, the col management of the colonies passed between different players over a set amount of time. Uh, you can you can give each other funny names and boss each other around, and you can laugh when they're all horribly mutilated by giant beetles and elder things that are beyond the ken of man and uh, things like that. So that's a fun little thing. Oh, and this is the new colonist lower class immigration event. So I'm going to get two lower class workers. Now the flavor text is that they stumble over the woods because they didn't get a nice comfortable airship ride like you did. So my two options here are to accept them or to reject them. I'm going to accept them. Uh, I need more workers. When you have more prestige, and I only have one point of prestige at the moment, when you have three or more prestige, you'll have the additional option of searching... Well, I mean, you have the additional option of getting more immigrants at the time they arrive. And the, the flavor text says we're going to send out an airship to look for stragglers who weren't with these guys who wandered out of the woods. And often you'll get one between one and three additional immigrants. That will cost you prestige, of course. So you have to weigh whether or not it's uh, worth it. I mean, you might need that prestige for, you know, emergency food shipment or something. So the kitchen's been built. The ovens are on their way. Stone crops are on their way. I think now would be a good time to build. Actually, how are we doing for commodities? Yeah, okay. I think now's a good time to build a place for my colonists to sleep. Again, these buildings don't have to be rectangles. I'm just building them this way for expediency's sake. But by stacking squares like this, they could actually be any shape. Received notification here that someone is sleeping on the ground because my colony has no beds, and uh, that's because I haven't built a place. <laughs> I haven't built any beds. Actually, that's not true. I built one bed, but my colony could certainly stand to use more. I have six bolts of cloth, which means I am able to build six cots. And why did I build this awkward corner? It's a terribly inefficient use of. Ugh. Okay, that'll do for now. It's it's a little bit ugly. And in the meantime, I'm going to queue up a job to collect these coconuts. Okay, as I was saying, another thing I for omitted mentioning in the previous episode is the way the memory system has been changed. So here's a colonist information UI, and it's been refined a little bit since the previous revision. So it's divided into columns, each reflecting um, a different emotion, and the emotion that has, that has the highest or has the greatest influence on the personality of a given colonist is highlighted here in gold. In this case, he is Zora Golden Crimble is happier than he is sad, angry, or fearful, and 
The fifth column here is actually the madness meter. Zero madness is what you're aiming for. You can become increasingly mad through a number of things. Digging up horrible artifacts from the ground or encounters with obelescians or uh, encounters with uh, fish people or uh, ominous dreams, whisperings from beyond space and time. <coughs> All of those things contrib contribute to madness. Now we can see here, um, so, so he's happy. We can see here his memories. Underneath the feelings header, we can see all the things that are affecting the way he feels. If I mouse over each one, for instance, the stomping his feet memory, we can see that it is, uh, well, okay, it's too close to the bottom. If we go to the happiness memory, we can see there's an arrow indicating that this was a happy memory. This particular memory was a happy one, which influenced, made him a happier person. He, uh, the one at the bottom here is a memory of eating, which also made him a little happier. Now, stomping his feet, actually, it's an expression of anger. So because he had an opportunity to express that anger, his anger meter went down. Uh, and you might have noticed some of those memories just became dim, and that's because they're fading memories. So the most recent memory always has the most influence on his uh, on his emotional state. As new memories accumulate, they will displace the faint memories first. So in this way, uh, wait a second. Oh, there was a beetle trying to eat my chili pepper plants, but I believe Brad Pitt took care of it. And just expressed hunger there. See a little thought bubble with the plate? So if we look at Brad, for instance, feeling hungry, the memory of feeling hungry made him sad and made him angry. Er, yeah. And his memory of killing that fish person reduced his happiness and increased his sadness. And because I didn't build enough beds, uh, you, you, so you can see, their personalities are the aggregate of all their memories, which is... Uh, an interesting philosophical point, but probably outside the scope of this video. Okay, Zora Golden Grimble has some objection to my policy of friendship with the fish people. So earlier I said I want peaceful relations with the fish people. Zora Golden Grimble is not happy about this. And she would rather we give the order to shoot on sight. I am not going to do that. So I'm going to say stay the course. Let's take a look at Zora Golden Grimble actually. She's patriotic, she's craven. All of those things might, uh, these are traits. They're sort of built in personality traits and they will be more, uh, they're more likely to advocate uh, certain courses of action and per behave in certain ways depending on what their traits are. It may be that Zora Golden Crimple, um, it may be that the patriotic trait in this case was what made Zora Golden Crimble, um, which made her disagree with my earlier policy. There are other policies, uh, traits as well, like there's a xenophobic trait, in uh, which case a colonist will never be happy with any kind of peaceful relations with outsiders of any kind. So like foreign uh, humans of foreign national origin or fish people or, you know, various others. And some are, uh, some colonists will uh, always espouse peaceful relations. So if you ha institute a policy that says shoot all bandits and fish people on sight, uh, they will disagree with that. And I said, you know, they request that you maintain peaceful relations instead. And the more you disagree with, uh, the more you don't listen to their advice, uh, the more unhappy they will be. Uh, yeah, that's... So those are two things. You can change uh, you can change a column's name arbitrarily, and the memory system has seen some refinement. So this workshop needs a bunch more logs and a bunch more stone, and that's the autosave going off. Got a little bit of stone and a lot of logs. Unfortunately, I'm still quarrying out this rock. So we'll give the autosave a chance here. What I, again, what I really need to do is find more rock because that small outcropping is not going to last very long. 
I do have, ooh, what's this? So here's a hematite node. And this is malachite out here in the trees. So these golden carrots are potential mineralogy report sites. And when I get a naturalist, a naturalist can visit each of those. And after they spend some time surveying the site, they'll produce a report that says, if you build a mine here, it will produce X minerals. Uh, you know, one of these, each of these three sites. Now, given that each of these carrots is on top of a different mineral node, I can probably guess without the, the aid of a naturalist that building a mine here will make it a gold mine. And this will be a hematite mine. And this is a site where I can acquire a malachite. But oftentimes they don't spawn on top of, like it's not immediately obvious, they just spawn in the middle of a grassy field. In which case, you don't know what building a mine there will produce until you send a naturalist to survey the site for you. So I've got the first chili harvest in. Oh, actually, this is a stack of chilies. When the kitchen is, sees completion, uh, i.e. when these ovens are completed, I will be able to make food. I'll be able to cook food. Now I've got chilies, which means... Uh, I believe that hmm, chilies probably fall into the basic food uh, category. So I can keep a bunch of basic food, and that takes a variety of different food types and cooks it. So steak becomes cooked steak. Um, I believe chilies become stew. Although there is a secondary sort of coconut chili that uh, requires coconuts. Anyway, point being, uh, I've got food coming in. And although it's all raw right now, uh, it's better if it can be cooked. Uh, as mentioned briefly in Alpha 44, uh, cooked food now resets a colon's hunger right to zero, instead of just uh, reducing the amount of hunger a bit. Uh, whereas uh, raw food does not do that. Raw food just temporarily alleviates hunger. So cooked food is a much better solution. Right now, Mike, oh, Elwood will. I hope he enjoys eating an armload of chilies. Oh, there's been a personality conflict here. Elwood will, uh, Elwood will has had some kind of conflict with Fidelia Crumble. He punched her, and the memory reduced his anger a bit. So it was an expression of anger. There's Fidelia Crumble. She was hurt recently. She was punched by someone, which made her more angry. Uh, so it's in your best interest to keep people. As long as you provide them the basic staples of life, a place to sleep, things to eat, something to do, and then basic safety, uh, hopefully you can stave off dissatisfaction and anger. Otherwise, that's his expression in, uh, in the form of madness, in the form of personal conflicts, uh, different columns becoming enemies and attacking each other. Sometimes it escalates into murder. On top of the external threats to your colony. So attacks from fish people and soldiers and uh, eldritch creatures from beyond the, you know, beyond the can of men. And uh, other things like beetle stampedes, where giant beetles will attack your colony and try to eat your crops. And auroxes might attack your colonists. So there are internal, uh, internal stresses as well as external threats. And someone has just had an ominous dream. Zora Golden Crimble. Oh, I'm, I can see I'm going to have a problem with you. He's had a dream about mysterious lights in the forest. Which, um, unfortunately, means she's going a little bit mad. Now, I can reduce madness with booze. I don't have the facilities to produce booze right now. But I could probably... Actually, it's probably not a bad idea. To set up just a basic brewing vat here, which, when built, will allow me to produce chicha, I believe, which I'm going to have to brew out of corn, which um, means I actually have to grow corn at some point. So I've got a little bit of food banked. Oh, so I, I have the opportunity to spend some prestige for a favor. I'm actually going to save that. I don't particularly need any of these favors right now. 
The one I might consider is the Naturalist. Yeah, in fact, I will take the Naturalist. So the Empire has loaned me a Naturalist for three days, at the cost of two prestige. Left to her own devices, Naturalist Hildred's Walker will wander around to each of these survey sites and produce a survey. Oh, good, more colonists. Yes, let's just take the three colonists. The Naturalist is also able to dissect fishmen and obelescian corpses, which uh, is something I would actually ask her to do, except I think we dumped the body of that fishman out of town somewhere. So there's that. And um, dissecting those bodies yields up a bunch of other possibilities. Uh, madness, among other things, but also resources. When you dissect the bodies of Obelescians, sometimes they become mineral resources. And when you, and sometimes dissecting fishmen gets you uh, raw fishman steak, but also bushels of fishman organs for um, various, various uses. So for instance, the naturalist Hildred Walker has just uh, she surveyed the site here, and surprise, surprise, actually I think the, the arrow is inside this tree, so I can't click it. But basically, if you look at the bottom right here, the ticker screen says, she surveyed here and discovered a source of gold. So surprise, surprise, if you mine in the place where there are giant lumps of gold sticking out of ground, uh, you will produce gold. So, I think the colony is, you know, it's it's okay. Um, it's pretty stable. I would like, I mean, I need to ramp up the food production. I really need to ramp up the stone production, but we haven't had any external threats yet. I think we're doing okay on the foods, on the food side of things. Although a lot of our food, it comes from foraging, like these various funguses and coconuts, and those don't last forever. So when you forage a thing, be it a berry bush or a coconut tree or a clump of fungus, there is a percentage chance that it will not grow back. So slowly over time, you will eventually deplete all the sources of your forageables, which means you'd better have your farming uh, economy set up before people start to starve. Oh, she surveyed a couple more places. Yep, malachite here, no surprise, and hematite here. Again, pretty much what we expected. Another benefit of the naturalist, of course, is that she wanders around and explores areas. Although you can specifically request that she explore areas with the explore button here. Although I didn't really do that since she's headed that way anyway. I have a bandit notification. There's a bandit camp of two bandits somewhere. I, I just picked the option that says shoot them on sight. So I'm going to cut this one off here, uh, lest it go on too long. Uh, this is our colony, uh, day, day four of the colony in New Sogwood. So, uh, the game is Clockwork Empires. It's being developed by Gaslamp Games. It's still in early access. Um, it's a colony builder simulation type game. I, although, if you're hearing me say this now, that means you watch the whole video, which, you know, um, so you already know what that entails. My name is Alfred. I do these about once a month whenever a new big push, uh, a new update lands on the stable branch. Um, yeah, if you think this is the sort of game you might enjoy, I'd encourage you to check it out. Available either on Steam or I believe on the Humble Store and also directly through Gaslamp Games. Uh, the devs have said Alpha 44 is pretty stable as far as these things go, so it might not be a bad time to get into this sort of thing. Or, you know, just wait until it's done, right? I mean, it's an alpha, things are subject to change, stuff is broken, stuff is still being added. Uh, yeah, but I hope this has been informative for those of you who are interested. Thanks very much for watching. I'll be following this up with a few more episodes of The Colony in New Sockwood. Until then, uh, have a good one.